All right, so it says, uh, he needs to be stopped. Sources say Kerry Fukunaga abused his power <laughs> to pursue young women on set. But um, he needs to be stopped part is just like, <laughs> what would that even look like? Um, what would that look like? put up a like? really big net and catch it. This the, guy just doesn't date anymore? This, the, 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 the funniest Only part about... Only works on male movies, right? The funniest part about this is the, it's the stunning lack of anything actually illegal that he does here. It's just creepy well, not behavior. Just, he illegal. just hits on young women. Yeah, it's, no, that's literally what it is. The whole... It's, it's literally like this Legality enormous, aside, like anything actually immoral, I'm like struggling to see... This uh, it's basically like he's a Hollywood. Also, is it this guy who's in the thing? Like he's handsome. He's not like weird looking. Nope. As far as well, I that's why tell. all of them date him, and then afterwards they're like, "Oh, I guess he was a bad person, but he I had blinders on because he was attractive." So is <laughs> look, <laughs> you learn, you learn. That's part of life. <laughs> Uh, so it says, after wrapping up a scene in the set of a Apple TV's World War II miniseries, Masters of the Air, most of the cast and crew decamped. Director Kerry Fukunaga, though, hung back and began to take photos of two actresses. Dun, dun, of dun. them or with them? Uh, of them. Uh, according to two production sources, the celebrated uh, director's focus was not on the scene's main players, but rather on two of the background actresses, one of whom had recently turned 18. Dressed as prostitutes from the 1940s, taking pictures of the young women, he egged them on while they posed suggestively, bent against the wall, kneeling on the ground. I, I, I'm, I've yet to see anything here where it says they did not want to do this. Uh, did, did it say that anywhere in there? It says, he uh, egged them on while they did something of their own free will. Yes. It looks uh, like. One of the sources claims Fukunaga acted under the guise of needing the photos for continuity purposes, a task normally expected to fall on production's wardrobe department and not the man, the man at the helm of a 600-plus crew uh, cast and crew. Uh, the two production sources who watched the 10-minute interaction unfold, Fukunaga crossed a professional line using his positions in ways that felt uncomfortable if to those looking on. If you felt like... A teenage girl was getting actively predated upon in front of your very eyes and you didn't step in. And if you think it. it's that serious, then why didn't you do something? No, they don't think it's that serious. They think it's that serious enough to tell somebody after the fact. They don't care it's enough to so actually... St it's upon reflection, we have decided that that was not good. It was the first red flag of the, of the source's claims to Rolling Stone that they observed during Fukunaga's time directing a handful of episodes of the miniseries, which is being executive produced by Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg. Well, then maybe we should cancel Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg then. That was my first gut check, the source recalls. It was way past the line. There's no sort of argument that it's okay. Okay, in any way it's line? an absolute clear-cut abuse of power did he use the photos for something untoward did they catch him in the bathroom later also, like jerking off to photos of women did the like, girls like have the opportunity to say like i don't want to do this like that's what's not coming it sounds like they were like yeah cool i'll pose i'm this, in costume I, if if anything you can say they did want to do it and they wanted to do it for the wrong reasons and for reasons that they were led to believe by authority figures in their life that's just probably true. In a statement, and yeah, it's gross. Yeah. But 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 the, thing, but the point is that they're they're making. Well, also this let's like look at this language. Way past that's yeah. way. And past what is the line? The line? And seemingly, no one can agree what it is. That's what I said. Like, it, given everything that's going on in Hollywood, guys like this, who we all agree, yeah, is he? Does he probably use his position as a very powerful man in Hollywood to sleep with women that would probably that maybe wouldn't sleep with him otherwise? Yeah, probably. But then Hollywood needs to put regulation in check that says, look, you as the director cannot be porking the women in your movies. I How just about think that? This is like a weird thing that's happened because we're like, women should be sexually liberated and do whatever they want at any time. And it's in turn told women that they should never set any kind of boundaries and hold men accountable to them. The, uh, like, th that's what this seems like. If these girls are uncomfortable, which, like, I wouldn't have wanted to do this, this would have been uncomfortable for me, then you're just like, Sir, I must go to wardrobe now. Like, I can't but, like, do it. Do they have anyone who ever... <sighs> this is the thing. Like, I feel like I continue trying to have a nuanced opinion on these things. And then it's just thrown back in your face if you try to do that. But it's like, I'm sure that kids in entertainment have never had anyone advocating for their interests. Telling them that they should advocate for their own interests. And if they genuinely desire to do something like this, which... I would bet that they did. The only reasons they had for wanting to do it are wrong. Yep. Well, also, like, it's 10 minutes. Like, I don't 
he did not have a torrid affair. He did not, as far as we tell, hey, you pose for these photos and I'll give you a better role. Of course. Like, none of that seems to have yeah, been Yeah, and if happened. that were an aspect, it would have been mentioned, it would be, I'm sure. Yeah, but it would be different. Like, they're making still, this like, seem <laughs> crazier than ever. So, so it says, sources who worked with him, with the director on various films and TV series and commercials over the past six years described Fukunaga as using his sets as an opportunity to meet younger women and openly pursue multiple female cast and crew members at once during the production. So is the idea that he should pursue them uh, only one at a time? I mean, like, he's like, sorry, I can't pursue you, uh, Actress B. I'm currently courting Actress B. C and uh, I will return to you when I have finished my courtship. Are these women just mad they got cheated on? The, the or that he didn't marry any of them? They're I, like, finally, I don't this, know. Were, this were Hollywood they director. For something the happen. one we talked about initially was the case of Rachel Vinberg, who starred in in something that he had made, and she claimed that she was left with PTSD after their relationship, which started out as a friendship, but I really became. Think we overuse the term PTSD. Yes. Uh, well, that's that's what she said that she was diagnosed with PTSD, and then the the Loesch twins who said that he tried to like talk them into having a threesome together. He said like and, incest isn't wrong. And they and they're like and they're like yes yes it is. And, and he's Don't like, clip oh. me saying that. <laughs> Dave. Uh, those who did end up having a, a romantic relationship or even a friendship with Fukunaga claim that ult they ultimately walked away feeling confused, confused, gaslighted, or manipulated. According to Fukunaga's response through his attorney, Mr. Fukunaga has befriended men and women young and old on set. It reminds me of... Um, <laughs> Sick. Kevin uh, Spacey. <laughs> yeah, ki uh, kind of. Uh, but it says, uh, actress uh, Rachel Vinberg claimed earlier this month in a lengthy Instagram post, we've talked about this before, that she was diagnosed with PTSD from her friendship that turned into a sexual relationship with Fukunaga, whom she met in 2016 on a Samsung commercial on the set the day after she turned 18. I spent years being scared of him, Vinberg wrote on Instagram. Mans, uh, Mans is a groomer and has been doing this, uh, this stuff for years. Beware, women. When I thought about him, I thought about him. I just wanted to vomit. One young woman wrote who dated Fukunaga for a few months after meeting him on the set of his production. Tells Rolling Stone, I remember feeling so good to be away from him, like this heavy weight had was lifted off my shoulders. I could breathe again. He made me feel so claustrophobic and suffocating. I just really thought I was really crazy because he treated me like I was trash towards the end. Says a second young woman who tells Rolling Stone she uh, she began seeing Fukunaga after they met on his sets. I just became a really small, passive, quiet person, and I'm not usually that all of this adds up to like he's a crappy boyfriend who's yeah, probably he sounds like a messed up guy also yeah. how old is he? he's 44. 44 like if you're 18 and dating a 44 year old like i love a good age gap relationship but let's be realistic here men who are still single at 44 like and who only want to date extremely young women like have some stuff to work out yep. and i don't mean that to be cruel but like the reality is like you have to be careful about who you get involved with not everyone is going to treat you well so you can't be like oh my gosh he's a monster like mm -hmm. he but probably also, always was and you just think about who you're saying this to like does any teenager with parents who love them end up in a situation like this yeah i think so i think people and, have all kinds like, of reasons if their parents know about it I mean, but I if, don't you're, think if so. you're 18 and you don't live with your parents and they're far away, like, I don't, but I don't think that's supposed realistic. to, they're supposed to instill values in you and like your self-worth. See, I told, I during like, your upbringing, I get so what that you, you mean. understand that something like that is not appropriate. I get what you mean, but I think that there are lots of young women in this world who can have great parents, but are sold a weird bill of goods, which is like, we live in a culture mm -hmm. where dating is about casual sex and it's not unreasonable for men to ask for that. And that you walk this weird line. I, I, I've already said it, but like, I think that we don't encourage women to set boundaries and that's a huge men. part of all of this stuff is like they're like i didn't want to lose my potential like, this job like he's taking advantage i guess of the fact that they want these these jobs right. but and they, beyond that like think if, about why you want the job it's probably exactly. because you don't have much self-worth and yep. you base your self-worth on your commercial success befriending and pursuing young women during the production during production was a hallmark of fukunaga's behavior sources claim alleging his habit of treating his sets as a personal pickup bar was openly <laughs> discussed amongst cast and crew crew members i'm sure who wish they could be picking up the uh, the same women uh, I, I am very sure. Uh, four women who Rolling Stone spoke with, now this is what I mainly want to talk about, spoke with the claim that they were in their 20s when Fukunaga pursued them romantically on the set of various productions dating back to 2016. So he would have been pushing 40 at that time while they were in their 20s. Um, d do we have to consider the concept of like personal responsibility here for your own actions? Yes. 
without being disrespectful to any parties involved, Look, do they I, just have to take responsibility for their own dating choices? I don't. Uh, we were talking about this earlier, and I can't repeat everything I said. <laughs> But short answer, no, because clearly they're not capable of that. These these women, at least particularly, don't seem to have been able to no. to to resist the urge to do so uh, because they thought it was their career might gain traction. No, and traction, it's just like or? what I was, uh, what we were like talking about with James Franco, that that woman who said she was in the car with him, mm -hmm. and he like pressured her into like doing something I can't say on YouTube. Yeah, and she said it was because she didn't want him to hate her. Yeah, like. So you are just not present of mind. Yep. You can't be held accountable for your actions then, can you? I think you can. I think the thing is, like, you know, we have a weird culture that breeds low self-esteem in women and tells them, I, my thesis of the day, that, like, their boundaries should be malleable over time and you have to experience life and try things out and experiment. But, like, I think ultimately, like, this guy sounds like a creep. He sounds super weird. Yeah, he does. But, like, I also think that every one who gets involved with him to a certain extent is responsible for that right like if you can't look at yourself and say like this is making me uncomfortable and i don't like it or even if it's not like abusive even if it's like hey he's kind of a cat he's dating a lot of girls on set like then tell him that you don't want to see him anymore like it's it's that simple you just have to hold yourself accountable to setting boundaries which can be really difficult but like this is not like let's cancel this weird guy like as far as i know it speaks to the culture of that industry it does, like my issue with this is the hypocrisy of an industry that's talking about the he himself talks about being the champion of women in his stories you have to hire women you have to do this you have to do oh, that he's a male feminist he's a, red flag i don't know if he considers himself a male feminist but he's you know in the same camp of uh, camp as a joss whedon who claims himself to like he's like yeah I, you know i'm, I'm a ma he actually does say like i'm a male feminist and then when the article comes out he's like all these hot women wanted to sleep with me that never would have slept with me when i was younger what was i supposed to do and then he's like yes i'll sleep with you like uh, what did you expect their behavior to did you actually expect it to match their words which it never will so it says uh so it says sources on maniac and masters of the air allege fukunaga would flirt with multiple women at the same time paying them special attention on set three sources of masters of the air claim fukunaga showed interest in at least three young women in the cast and crew during filming i'm literally picturing a, a scene where like everyone's like got their eyes on one another like uh-oh he talked to that person for more than like three to five minutes he must be interested like what does that mean Right? Like, is he not supposed like, does it change? Like, does he at, interact with men or women he's not interested with much more coldly? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you gauge that? And is he supposed to just not show interest in any of these women at all? Is, is that what they want? Like, do they, they want like, uh, are they, is mean, he supposed to card them? Also, like, what are they actually for? Do to make sure they're in their 30s? Do they want an exclusive relationship with a director who's clearly, like, kind of a playboy creep who doesn't yep. want that? Like, let's be realistic here. Like, you probably had... I, I bet there were parts of the relationship that were not great for whatever reason, but also, like, you probably wanted something that he did not give you, and I'm sorry if he led you on in that way. Like, that is upsetting, but, like, let's not make this into something more than it is especially yeah. since we know more severe and like dangerous things happen in hollywood absolutely it says crew members recall whispering amongst themselves about fukunaga's advances and spending so much time with the younger female cast member uh members of the cast i'm wondering like would this article be happening if he was 30 35 who knows like is it because of how old he is like it's probably a combination uh, of things. like so if he was it's just this is i as i was saying to you earlier brett uh, this really pisses me off that they're overblowing this situation so, so much yep. when in the same industry there are, and I'm sure the viewers know, Yes, there are very serious things happening Going wrong. To, yep. to much, much younger people, people who are younger than 18. Yep. Very, uh, very prominent. And it's in all well, the industry virtue signals about what we, the right. uh, the regular folks should be doing and with our lives, which makes is, us feel like we're creeps. Uh, a production source who worked with the, worked on the Samsung commercial with Vinberg. That was the first one. And says F Fukunaga centralized attention. 
that's not how normal people talk. I'm sorry. The, 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 what is that even like? I get what they're saying, but talk like an actual nor- normal person. <laughs> Absolutely not. He attention. centralized attention to Vinberg. Uh, was memorable six years on. So it's like his centralized attention on Vinberg is still memorable to me. Six years, uh, six years on. Dude, have you not uh, had a life in six it, years? It didn't strike the source as icky at the time. They oh. say that it did hmm. stick with them, claiming that they noticed Fukunaga's intensity while interacting with Vinberg. He was interested in her. Should he have been interested in, in her? Probably not. Why didn't well, you do something about set, it? If they are forgetting this, like a film set is not a normal workplace. Nope. Uh, it says, uh, because, but people turned a blind eye towards the situation. The source explained, if it doesn't involve them, everyone kinds of turns the other cheek. Uh, other people would be like, oh, Except come on. later when we can all be mad about it. Oh, come on. People, he, the guy's a good looking young director that has a penchant for younger girls. Big deal. Uh, a lot of us didn't really think of it as a big deal. It was just like, you're, you're creepy, my guy. You don't need to be doing this. But for some reason, that's what he did. It's because nothing he was doing was illegal, just creepy. You're just benefiting in it now to make articles about the dude rather than actually dealing with it at the time because what would you have actually dealt with? What would they have dealt with? What would they have done? Told him not to? That's why I'm saying like the he needs to be stopped line. It's well, just what, like, st- what... What are you going to stop? Production romances are hardly <laughs> taboo in Hollywood. Spending 12 plus hours a day with colleagues for a shoot that, uh, that could stretch for months. It's no surprise that multiple flings arise from the near constant time cast and crew spend together. And that's okay as long as they tell you it's okay, apparently, unless Rolling Stone tells you it's not okay. Uh, but sources allege uh, Fukunaga's behavior crosses the line of having a casual romance uh, during ro- uh, during production. There we go back to the idea I love of a good casual, casual romance. romance. That never uh, has any problems in professional <laughs> no, settings. No, no, nothing ever goes wrong. Uh, it says, it wasn't just that Fukunaga was everyone's boss, but his status within the industry could help launch someone's career or at the very least ensure a gig on his next project. The woman who casually dated Fukunaga claims that he had floated the idea of helping make her a famous actress and suggested putting her in his other projects so it's like the most classic hollywood director so creepy behavior and they don't see it coming from like 10 it's miles away it's different danny really likes me yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, apparently so he it doesn't says, like uh, sorry you're all just being ridiculous it says it is evidence that he used his influence in the film industry thank, thank you, you uh to pursue many young women uh, they keep using the phrase young rather than saying uh like age appropriate age appropriate women that he could legally date uh, he but, could legally date anyone who's over 18. Yes, but, but that's what I'm saying. They're, they're not saying that he's like literally working with these people in a professional work environment because they're both adults. They're saying that he was pretty... Because that, that's, the language itself is a smear. Even if it's for them probably accurate if he is creepy, the language itself is saying he didn't do anything legally wrong, so we're going to frame it as he did something morally wrong uh, so that we can which, attack like, maybe him. Which he did, Which right? he did. But, but I'm saying, but the point is, is that nobody's holding anybody else accountable. He was supposed to do what in this case? What were they supposed to do? Maybe they should not have uh, engaged with him and said, no, I would rather not it's like a co It's like we forget that that's an option. Like girls being like, well, he thought, said he would help me career. And it's like you... Number one, believed him. And also, like, you thought, ah, definitely worth sleeping with this guy to advance my career. Like, no, this is like, I I don't understand why that is an acceptable line of thought. Whereas him being like, well, these girls want to sleep with me because I'm a high powered man. Like, that's bad. He is creepy and weird. Like, date someone age appropriate team. But like, I will say that there there's an argument to made for the for the women here that like, if he zeroes in on you. And makes it your responsibility to say no to him, knowing that the implication could be that he won't. That that's yes, I agree with that. But do I believe that that was the case every time, and that they didn't interact with him flirtatiously? No, no, I I don't like. So you'll flirt with him, but then when does it go too far? Like there is something to be said that they're being put on the spot by him showing interest. Also, has anyone who's gotten into his next movie been like, "Yeah, you treated me badly," like? This is all people who have been burned by the relationship that didn't work out the way they wanted to. There was a guy who said that he was like not like like that he uh, he used the same tactics on him as a writer to like get him to oh like make his work. Yeah, I'll find like it says. So uh, the guy is a jerk and he throws his power around. Yep. 
Big whoop. Uh, and, and here's the paragraph I was talking about before. It says, uh, and, it, uh, and it was Fukunaga reacting to the Supreme Court's leaked draft opinion over Roe v. Wade uh, by saying oh that the gosh. court just legitimized a war against women's rights on Instagram. Then Vinberg says she, that made her, that's what made Vinberg decide to come forward. It says, there's this guy, right? He's like, oh, women's rights in America. We have to protect it, she said on Instagram shortly before naming Fukunaga. He's effing traumatizing women. He doesn't give an F about women. He refers to women as horse uh i won't say that word uh horses uh horses yes he uh i've heard that it pisses me off he go, he and he goes out there and like i care about women go f yourself you don't give an f about women so it's like we always say hollywood hypocrisy from the people that are going to lecture you while they're in an environment that is literally about as conducive to like uh, like deviant and um, irredeemable behavior as possible just the fact that they don't impart any type of rules like hey direct your guy you cannot get caught. You cannot be in a relationship with any of these actresses for the sake of your career and our studio and this multi-gazillion dollar production we're putting together where every bit of bad press could sink it. Maybe you should keep it in your pants and let the women go date someone that's not being um, uh, directed by you, right? Is that so hard to do? But the industry wants to both lecture you but not make any changes inward. That is the problem I have with it. Well, that's the whole reason they're doing it. Yeah. It's just guilt. And here's the here's the writer, Nick Cuse, who came out in support of Vinberg and the Loesch twins. Uh, he's the first public admo admonishment, 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 uh, that came from someone that he had worked with Fukunaga closely for a number of years. Cuse, who had worked out as a consultant on No Time to Die and was a co-producer for Maniac, wrote on Instagram that uh, he was the worst human being I've ever met. And this is... Uh, Saying that the way uh, he was worse with non-celebrities, that he he once saw him dump his cut fingernails into another person's car. I don't. Awesome. I I, I don't know if I actually believe that. But that like, like it's very specific that, though. It's, so. it's like the most Hollywood thing ever. Like that a director well, would do. Just like carrying him around. He's like ah. <laughs> He has a little Ziploc bag. <laughs> he's like waiting all day. Like, he's like, it's all it's all nice cars in the parking lot there. So he has to go to like a local Walmart. He's like, it's like a Toyota Prius. He's like, ha. Huh, I believe it. To the plebs go my go my fingernails. Like, Goodbye. I believe it. He, he didn't groom me to F me, but he did use a lot of the same tactics to get me to write his scripts for him. He wrote on Instagram, which he would put his name on one time. One time after sending, uh, after spending three weeks on a script for him, he told me to open the cover page and type his name under written by. I had to literally type the stolen credit with my own fingers. No, you didn't just don't yeah, do just it. Just say no, say no. Uh, he did not respond for us. It's just like all of this, like in, as charitable as I want to be to everyone involved comes down to a lack of personal responsibility and further proof that like, I don't know how, uh, if Hollywood's the one that should be lecturing men and women on their ability to work together or what their roles are on society. Cause they can't seem to figure it out for themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you see this as something where it's like, um, d does this change ever? D do we ever actually see this change from Hollywood? You think they're... Is that, it possible? Are they ever going to look inwards? Yeah, is it possible? At themselves? No. No. No? No? But all they want to do is just project all of their dysfunction On onto, onto the rest of society yeah. and ignore their own. Like, that's the whole reason they're doing it. Yep. And then, like, we it's just... classic. Uh, like, they... Like, just like with the Depp article earlier that mentioned... Um, uh, working with Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Manson's like back in the news now because he ha he's having his charges dropped against him. His are actual assault char charges because they, they waited too long to come forward. It's like the whole thing is just exhausting. And it's just like, I don't know what it's to like actually... It's like every day there is a new headline about this star gets allegations of this. Which maybe wouldn't every bother me if they didn't lecture day. us. Right, yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, there was one more super chat there. It was? Uh, I believe Let's so. See. Yes. Uh, Waffle Sensei says they make these articles because they want to reinforce that you regret that if you regret sex you had to advance your career that means you were taken advantage of which is inherently contradictory to the idea of personal responsibility and even sexual liberation the idea that you uh, uh, through sexual liberation uh, don't have to just have sex because you love someone but could use it uh, as a way to advance your career which, you know, made sense to them in, like, what, the 70s. And yeah. was, uh, now uh, we are coming back around to uh, a weird form of, like... It's like they liberated sex too much. Yep. So now it's like, well, it's Thank not, not going to work as a strategy to advance your career because 
five other actresses will do the same thing yep. because we're all sexually liberated. We better not get a crisis meter today because I wasn't able to control Hannah Claire the last time we had a crisis. Oh my no, gosh. it just we, goes off. It's going to be so good. It, it, Guys, please get us a crisis no, party I'm today. Do, do it. So Lice that Hannah Claire stimulated. will go off the rails. I, the and whole Pod show Luck is just an absolute disaster. I don't again. know what it is about those lights, but like, I just like, it's it was completely, not fair. it's hypnotic. It's, it's hypnotic. It's like a I, my other personality. <laughs> like literally, I was like, I just gave up. I tried for about three minutes and Hannah Claire just, uh, but we laughed. Acted we like a, a good time. Acted like a child, and I just gave I up. Acted like a child. Wow. I just had an enjoyable time. I'm sorry that you can't control <laughs> this podcast. Perhaps it's it mine is, now. It is my fault. See, anyway. I need to have I a need crisis to take party if you want me to seize control of this. Not even fair. <laughs> Crispy there, like Transport like LLC says, "I like how you guys can point out what what they are trying to frame the story by explaining the way they're writing the story. It's the, like w the yeah. number one thing that always comes like, and I'm not a journalist. I don't write for, but you know, you read a lot. Uh, Hi Brett. I'm a journalist. I know. Like, language is everything. <laughs> well, I just identified as a journalist. L language is everything. Oh, the word, like every scary. word you choose to use is very, just, it's like the, the number one way that I started realizing the way that the media was biased was lie by structure, meaning mm -hmm. like where they would place specific information in yes. an article. I also think that you can notice it, um, um, there are certain key issues. I'm not going to list them on the podcast, mm -hmm. but you can look at an issue and see right off the bat, like how they start choosing the words yeah. to talk about certain things and which terms make it in that can tell you like where their perspective is immediately. I think language is so powerful. Um, I remember taking a class on novellas when I was in college and novellas are, you know, less than 50,000 words. They're mm -hmm. short novels. And I remember having a professor say like, it means that every word that you pick has more power. And I think about that with journalism, like they are, you know, you have to work really hard to be neutral yeah. because it's very easy to start being like, well, I like don't know how to explain this term, so I'll just use the widely used term. But then you are consenting to the widely used narrative. And yep. if you don't actually believe in the widely used narrative or if the widely used narrative is full of bias, then you are perpetuating bias. Yep. So and like to, like to me like even here when when they say young women that that's meant to imply something he did not do anything legally wrong but it's meant to frame it as what he's doing was creepy so if they're women which I think is worth noting yes, right no like, if they're women in their in their twenties young women in their in their early if they're twenty two and he's forty four there are Hollywood couples that are married with that age difference that would get a glowing article from Rolling Stone about their fantastic marriage. How do you overcome the, the, the age, gap. the age gap, but because it's framed in the context of this article, it's negative. Well, and I'll say like with age gap relationships, people like there can be successful couples that are, you know, seven, 10, 15 years apart. But when you are dating, I think especially as like a young woman, like, you have to go into it more carefully, right? Yeah. Because someone who has chosen to not get married by the time they're 45, like yeah. this guy has, like, you know, their perspectives on commitment and relationships are probably not, they may not be what you're looking for. Yep. And I think deluding yourself into being like, well, he's been waiting for me for two decades to become legal is like very uh. dangerous. Seeing Vinberg and the Loesch sisters come forward, Greer says she hopes uh, their stories will be recognized by the wider Hollywood industry and result in change, not just on Fukunaga's part, but for anyone in a position of power. Shouldn't they be looking for change on the ground level and making these changes by enforcing policies within their industry? Yeah, just write it into his contract. You can't date any female yeah, on our you. set. It says, I do not have... I feel like, I won't do it. Yeah. Right, exactly. That's how I meet women. <laughs> He's like, I will not make this James Bond movie That's, if I cannot date the 25-year-old on set. This is just another example the of sequel. the creative type, uh, strongman, sad boy, indie. Oh, hey. Like, he is like that guy who is totally mediocre and only gets women because he happens to be in a position of power and pretends that he's like really deep and creative. Mm -hmm. I do not have, and so this is how they finish it off. I do not have high hopes that Fukunaga will ever acknowledge any of this or apologize. Um, so this is like, he has to apologize to each individual if he person. Did, let's guess what would happen. Uh, then he would, then it would just get worse for him. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> so it says, but if, at, uh, but if at least the industry as a whole can acknowledge that we're not accepting this type of treatment in the workplace and that these things happened are not acceptable, that would be enough for me. So to do that, you need to make changes at the studio level where you enforce policies that does not let allow this director to hold uh, the ability to have relationships with people he has power with in the 
in the art, you know, in his They should in his charge job. him. Every time he gets involved with someone, he loses $500,000. That's perfect. Uh, um, like a weird version of a moral clause. Like tie it to like, his revenue. Like yeah. every time that he, you know, gets involved with someone. It's like, I love like, having sex with those 22-year-old actresses, but, you, but, but you I like, like money more. But you like her $150,000 worth? For, and then for every week, there's like a surcharge. It's, uh, that, and it's it like when you're an up. Uber and like the miles go up. Exactly. Uh, I believe there was one. Yes. Yeah, There's one more there. Okay, for 2X says, for Hannah Claire, innocent bystander and future... Involuntary <laughs> test pilot for Brett's dunking tank machine. Keep being smart. Thank you. But also, wait, wait, it's wait. Coming. Let's talk about this dunk tank. It's it's gonna happen. Might I point out that there's much electrical equipment? Are you guys trying to murder me? <laughs> Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.